Hello everyone, Brad does it all here again. I'm starting a little video series here where I'm building a dehumidification kiln for my lumber. And I'm basing this off the uh, Nile plans that come in their instruction manual. I'm gonna be using their L53 model. And I'm not gonna go through every little construction detail, but I'm just gonna really uh, concentrate on the specific things that you need to do for a kiln that uh, I've came across. But anyway, you can see in the background, I've got it already framed up, so I got I filmed my intro a little bit too late. If you want to, after the end of this part one, I will go into a little bit of why I chose a dehumidification kiln over a solar kiln or a vacuum kiln. I'll spend a little time on that, but anyway, we'll get started and we'll get in here to uh, show you how I got the foundation here for part one. So I'm spreading my gravel now. I dug the foundation by hand, didn't film that, thought that'd be kind of boring. I did borrow a tiller from a neighbor, so that helped a lot to get the soil loosened up to dig it all out. So it took a fair amount of time to get this done. I've got my footers dug, I've got my gravel poured here. I did four inches of uh, number 57 gravel. Uh, I've got my uh, forms put up. And you'll notice I've got a big crack down there, but I'll show you why that doesn't really matter in a little while. Anyway, right now I'm getting ready to put down some six mil plastic on top of the gravel. Okay, I've got the plastic down, six mil plastic, and now I've put down two inch thick R10 insulation. And you wanna be sure to use the 25 PSI because that's what you need for the underlayment under concrete. I've got all my uh, forms set up. I've got my two inch thick insulation set up and uh, I'll take you a walk around with that. And as I said before, I put the plastic down over top of the gravel and then I've got the two inch foam over top of that. And I saw some people put the plastic over the foam I think that would be fine if you had just a flat slab, but since I'm doing a monolithic slab with footers, I felt like it was better to put the plastic under the insulation. That way, the concrete could go up under the insulation. But I'll take you a little walk around and show you everything. I had a little bit of a rain came through, so I got a little water down on my footers, but you can see the plastic I put all the way through my footers. And then I've got the insulation there. And what I was talking about before is, you know, I didn't really care about having some gaps in here. That's why I just used some two by fours because the insulation board is gonna keep the concrete from coming through. So I didn't really have to make a solid form right here with the foam board. But you know, here's where I was, you know, if you put plastic over top, I think you wouldn't be able to get concrete underneath in here. And I just think it would make a soft spot in your slab. So I think the plastic in this case is better underneath the foam board. Here's the rebar done. Uh, I was going to use a metal rebar, but of course Lowe's was out of it. So uh, they had the fiberglass, which is, was exactly the same price. And a little research I did uh, is actually stronger than the steel, in tension at least. Um, so I just went with that. But you can see I used these little plastic chairs and uh, tied all those together. Uh, did a double layer into the footers right there. And if you notice, I picked this little trick up from another YouTube video. I, I put screws into my foam board so that when the concrete cures around it, it'll hold the foam board to the size of the concrete. So I just used some old drywall screws that I had um, to do that with. All right, one other detail I wanted to mention is, um, it's gonna be hard to see, but underneath here, when I, on the bottoms of all these um, insulation boards, I actually 45 those to allow the concrete to flow underneath to make the footer wider under the foam board. So I just want to point that out and then one thing that was kind of nice about these uh, plastic chairs is that I just took some drywall screws again and just you could just push them in with your finger and just pop them in a couple of them just to hold those chairs in place. But anyway, uh, still waiting on the concrete truck. Should be here in about 40 minutes. Okay, as you can see now, I've gotten my studs put in. And I decided to just do the studs after I poured the concrete, concrete for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, my friend Tim and I had never done a lot of concrete, and so we didn't want the anchors in our way when we were troweling and, and floating the pad. So we want to do that afterwards. And then the other reason is, you know, it's kind of a little time consuming to get them placed in the exact correct place with jigs and everything while the concrete's still wet. And we didn't want to take away time to do that while we were trying to get the concrete all flat and smooth. Go over just some reasons why I chose the dehumidification kiln over the solar kiln 
or the vacuum kiln. I'd actually had planned out back in the spring of this year to build a solar kiln. Uh, but really when I got into it, in my particular case, I didn't really have a good place to put it where I could get some good sun. I've got some trees from my neighbor's uh, property that are blocking me uh, from getting sunlight through the entire day. And the other big thing about the solar kiln is just getting it hot enough to be able to do a kill cycle. Um, because you really need to get the temperature up in there to about at least 150 degrees F. And I just, I've seen a lot of people talk about it on the forums on the internet, but I've never really seen anybody that actually had come up with a solution to do it. Really the construction costs on the solar kiln was, was up there with the dehumidification kiln that I'm building. So the, the polycarbonate for the roof and all that is pretty expensive material. So I just decided to do a dehumidification kiln. The reason I didn't go with the vacuum kiln was, you know, the, you know, the eye dry is the big name right now, but uh, those things really jumped up in the last two or three years. And so their small kiln, I believe was $59,000. And you still have to put that kiln inside of a building. You can't just let it set outside on its own. So that was another factor of doing that. And you know, the cost was just a little bit uh, out of hand for me. And so that's why I chose the dehumidification kiln because uh, the plans that come from Nihal are really great. I mean, I went through them pretty thoroughly and they do a real good job on the plans they give you in the manual of how to build the kiln. Appreciate you guys watching and uh, tune in for part two. Thanks.